portion of St. Paul's letter to Philemon, verses 8 through 16. Accordingly, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do what is required, yet for love's sake I prefer to appeal to you, I, Paul, an old man and now a prisoner also for Christ Jesus, I appeal to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I became in my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful to you and to me. I am sending him back to you, sending my very heart. I would have been glad to keep him with me in order that he might serve me on your behalf during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I preferred to do nothing without your consent in order that your goodness might not be by compulsion, but of your own accord. For this, perhaps, is why he was parted from you for a while, that you might have him back forever, no longer as a bondservant, but more than a bondservant, as a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Paul's letter to the slave owner Philemon is a prime example of the pastoral heart and care of Pastor Paul. Paul was writing this letter of a runaway slave named Onesimus, whom Philemon owned. It seemed obvious from the beginning of Paul's letter that Philemon was a godly and righteous man. Paul spoke highly of the life of Philemon had been living, and it was to this godly character that Paul appeals on behalf of Onesimus. It also appears that Paul had come into contact with Onesimus, possibly while Paul was under house arrest in Rome. And it appears that he had developed a relationship with this man akin to that of a father and a son. Paul was proud of this man. He cared for him, not just in a pastoral sense, but in that way that a father cares for his son and wants his son to do what is good, right, and just. And it is for that very reason that Paul encourages this runaway slave to return to his owner. That request was daunting. The punishment for desertion as a slave was severe, sometimes even punishable by death. We can be sure that the prospect of returning to Philemon wasn't only something that would be humiliating for Onesimus, but something that would induce fear and trepidation in his heart. Yet, despite this fear, Paul encourages Onesimus to go. In this act of encouragement of both Onesimus and Philemon, here we see Paul's pastoral heart. For the man who had sinned by leaving his vocation unfulfilled, Paul encourages Onesimus not only confession of sin, but a life of repentance. He encourages him to go back and to return to the vocation in which God has placed this man. Love for his adopted son, Onesimus, dictated such a desire. By correcting the sin he had committed, Onesimus would rectify his relationship with Philemon. This was only possible because of Paul's pastoral heart toward Philemon. His encouragement to Philemon to receive Onesimus with love and forgiveness was intended to poke at the new man in Philemon, gently reminding him of the love and forgiveness from Christ, those things which he had learned from Pastor Paul. And then, with echoes of his letters to the Corinthians and the Ephesians, Paul reminds both of these men that through their faith in Christ, they were a part of one body, despite their earthly vocations being vastly different from each other. This pastoral care and concern for souls is exhibited by your pastor too, dear Christian. Every week through the law, he exhorts you to leave your life of sin and return to Christ. To be sure, that life of sin is tempting. 
The devil, your flesh, and the world tempt and entice you to stay in it. Those unholy three lure you to leave your own vocations, that of father or mother, son or daughter, husband or wife, brother or sister, employer or employee, congregation member, and yes, even pastor. They encourage them to leave and to leave them unfulfilled with the false and misleading dream of so-called freedom and liberty. But don't be fooled. Leaving your vocation to follow the fleeting desires of the flesh or the fading fads of the world will leave you destitute, empty, and helpless. But most of all, it will still leave you enslaved. You'll still be enslaved to sin, following its desires and lusts, and ending up eventually in the fires of hell. But listen to Paul's encouragement. Repent. Return to your God. Leave your life of sin. Ignore the empty threats of Satan as he tries to convict you in your sin, claiming that God has already judged you. Resist the urge to listen to your sinful self as it tries to convince you to stay in that comfortable life of sin. Hear and trust the words of Christ. Come to me. All you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take a bath in your baptism today. Wash the stains and blemishes away. Put on the clean, fresh linens of Christ's righteousness. Come to the table and feast on Christ. Hear and trust that your Savior's words are true. If you forgive anyone their sins, They are forgiven. You see, dear Christian, your master wants you back. He wants you to come and serve him, not in humiliating servitude, but in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Your master is not just the master of your life, but the master of sin, death, and the devil. He has conquered all those things through the cross and his empty tomb. For all these things, by living and working faithfully in each of our vocations, we ought to thank and praise, to serve and obey him. This is most certainly true. Amen. Lord Jesus, By your precious blood you redeemed me, a lost and condemned creature, and called me to be your very own, a fellow citizen with the saints. You, O Lord, know all things. You know that I love you. You know that my renewed heart desires to serve you in righteousness and holiness, to cast aside the sin that so easily entangles me, and to run with perseverance the race set before me. I grieve, O Lord, that I have so often failed to do what you, my precious Savior, has asked me. So often I have refused to follow you and your example, instead choosing the paths of the world and the desires of my sinful flesh. In me there is no good thing. The good that I would do, I do not. And the evil that I would not, that I do. I am so wretched Who will deliver me from this body of death? To you, my Savior and loving friend, I flee. Uphold me with your willing spirit. You are the author and perfecter of my faith, having delivered me from the guilt and punishment of sin and having redeemed me from its powers and dominion. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Purge every evil desire and thought from my heart and mind, and fill me with a pure love for you and your will. Whether I live or die, may I be yours alone and forever. Through Jesus Christ, my Lord. Amen. 